for review today. Yeah, uh, okay. Uh, yeah. One second. Let me also open the version from. Okay. Okay. Uh, let me start recording. Okay, so uh, the paper that I'm going to review today uh, uh, is entitled uh, Increasing the Generalizability of Economic Evaluations, Recommendations for the Design, Analysis and Reporting of Studies. Uh, so what, uh, I mean, I was just thinking that we should now take up uh, some of these uh, guidelines or recommendations that are published uh, for doing as well as reporting uh, the economic uh, evaluations or decision analysis uh, studies or maybe cost effectiveness uh, type of studies so that we can keep uh, these uh, things in mind whenever uh, we are designing such uh, studies. So the one which I decided to take is about, uh, uh, I mean in terms of uh, generalizability, now uh, thinking about generalizability of whatever uh, economic evaluations we might be doing is uh, pretty early for us uh, right now because uh, we are still getting hands-on and so on. Uh, however, I still thought that it is, uh, it is an important aspect to think about uh, whenever we are uh, even planning a small study. Uh, you will understand that many of these recommendations are difficult to uh, follow, implement and so on, but yet there are some uh, recommendations which we can always uh, consider uh, for doing the uh, or planning any economic evaluations. So, Dimpo, yes. Uh, in, in this context of um, economic evaluation, what does the word generalizability mean? Okay, uh, so what happens, uh, for example, if we do any economic evaluations, which could be like, say, cost-effectiveness analysis, okay? And we show that uh, the option uh, A is uh, cost-effective than option B. Then, mm, given that uh, when I did this cost effectiveness study, I utilized the data from say particular region or maybe say just particular hospital uh, in particular population and so on. Now with this when I am claiming that option A is better or cost effective than option B, will this apply to say any other country? Okay, uh, I mean, given their uh, setting, given their population, given their uh, cost uh, structure, do you get my point? Mm -hmm. Because uh, it varies uh, from uh, country to country as well as from region to region and within country also different hospitals might have uh, different uh, uh, cost structure as well as comparator and so on. You're getting my point. So, as you know, even within same region also, there are hospitals who bill 10,000 amount and the in the same region you will have hospital who bills 1,000 for maybe same uh, procedure. Yeah. So these things vary and in given these things so much variation exists, uh, it is uh, very hard to uh, take uh, economic evaluation from one country and decide the policy in another country. You are getting? Mm -hmm. that, that, that 
means like uh, we can imply a, a maybe one finding from the other country we can use their finding in, in our country in our setting is for generalizability yes exactly generalizability for example uh, typical randomized control trials are are considered the results of typical rct are considered generalizable what that means if i conduct a well planned rct in this in country a i can definitely apply and consider yes uh, uh, say intervention A is better in terms of efficacy I'm talking when I say RCTs so definitely intervention A is efficacious than B and I can use this result in country B which is which is far far different than country A okay so that means RCT results of RCTs are generalizable you're getting Rafael mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but this doesn't happen so in uh, cost evaluations and there are uh, several reasons which we know already uh, because of the cost factor that gets introduced in the co economic evaluation and this cost varies uh, not only for the drugs used not or the medicines used or the procedure or the doctor fees or the nurse fee or the um, hospitalization charges and any other resources which are used in the hospital uh, they vary from one hospital to another hospital definitely one region to another region and so one country to another country mm -hmm. so it remains a challenge to uh, accept the uh, uh, economic evaluations done in one country to accept them in another country okay and uh -huh. people still do that despite I mean there are limitations and so on people do that uh, sometimes keeping limitations in mind sometimes ignoring them uh -huh. so keeping limitations in mind means they thoroughly review the uh, findings by other they try to understand the population and the cost structure and the uh, method they use to uh, implement the economic evaluation and then then they use that data or findings of the economic evaluation which is far reasonable however just not looking at that and uh, going ahead and directly blindly applying may not make sense okay so these are the uh, challenges and because they involve a lot of uh, investment in conducting such studies uh, the agency itself uh, has come up with this uh, guidelines the agency which uh, they pronounce as INAHATA which is International Association of Health Technology Agencies which is like a combination of uh, a different uh, HTA I mean HTA is a health technology assessment based in different countries and these all HTAs come together and they have formed this international association and then they uh, keep watch on uh, that uh, how uh, we can use uh, uh, findings from another country for economic evaluations and therefore they have come up with these a uh, couple of recommendations which would be good to follow okay uh -huh. okay yeah Vin tell me did you uh, do you think uh, in Singapore uh, this kind of association hello in Singapore yes. in Ahata is it uh, in Ahata uh, is like uh, association of HTAs Oh, okay. So, so you can ask this way, like, if there is any HTA uh, existing in Singapore. Oh. Mm, I'm not sure, but there should be uh, some team working on this for sure. For sure, yeah. Yeah, may not be a formal uh, 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 organization, but definitely there is a group working in this area. Okay, yeah. yeah. So in this, uh, the whole uh, paper uh, talks about recommendations uh, for increasing the generalizability of economic evaluations mm -hmm. for uh, 
two types uh, of economic evaluations. Yeah. One type uh, undertaken uh, during RCTs, uh, during prospective study, which they call it as uh, using patient level data, okay, where uh, because it is prospectively all data is collected for individual patient. Okay, while another uh, recommendations they provide for decision modeling economic evaluations where it is not at individual patient level but it is based on um, what is done until now. The kind of studies that Rafael is uh, doing and we are doing. Okay, uh -huh. now for these two uh, major uh, types of economic evaluations patient based and decision modeling they further divide their recommendations uh, in terms of when you are designing what are the recommendations, when you are doing analysis of the data, what are the recommendations and finally when you are reporting your uh, results or findings, what are the recommendations. So that is how the whole uh, paper is divided and let me also tell you about the author who is Dramand et al. Uh, and uh, I think uh, by now we all should know that uh, he is a well-known economist. He has published a lot of books and uh, papers and they are really good. I mean uh, one of the book uh, economics um, I think there is one book. I don't remember, but it is uh, related to economics uh, and how to do uh, cost effectiveness analysis and so on. And that book uh, is kind of a uh, Bible for those uh, uh, doing economic analysis. Uh, so he is a very good uh, author and has authority in economic evaluations. Okay, now uh, coming to the economic uh, evaluations, I mean recommendations for increasing the generalizability of economic evaluations using patient level, level data. I am on page 2 of the article right now on the right hand side column. So, um, uh, before even we uh, go into that, uh, uh, anyway, we talked about what are the uh, limitations of uh, generalize, uh, generalizability of economic evaluations, the factors like uh, because the cost factor differs from place to place and lot of uh, costing is involved in economic evaluation, uh, sorry, economic uh, evaluations. So, Although uh, we know that to some extent we can overcome the, uh, this limitations uh, like one method is a sensitivity analysis where we take extreme values and try to see what is the conclusion. Uh, this may not be a solution all the time. Okay? And uh, the other challenge when you use patient level data uh, for economic evaluation um, is that um, they are only uh, like uh, uh, they are even more complex because uh, the trials which are aimed I mean prospective trials which are aimed at collecting data from for proving uh, efficacy or uh, more uh, uh, stringent criteria uh, it is sometimes or many a times hard to collect all patient level data, resource use, quality of life, uh, utilization uh, uh, and uh, so on. And uh, therefore uh, this economic evaluation becomes all the more challenging uh, to uh, include during uh, RCT or uh, during collection of patient level data and therefore you will see that there are very few papers who uh, are publishing uh, at uh, this economic evaluation uh, uh, while doing prospective study. Most of them are uh, decision analytic, analytic studies. Okay, so um, but even when you plan any uh, uh, economic evaluation at patient level, okay, uh, as a part of any clinical trial, then 
the clinical researcher has to work uh, closely with the economist and most of the time economist will have to compromise on several aspects because introducing too much burden in prospective data collection can also hamper losing collection of important data and therefore uh, yes economists will have to compromise uh, while uh, such uh, uh, collection of data but nevertheless there are some recommendations which can easily be uh, followed so first is at the design uh, stage we will talk about so at design stage uh, which means when you are designing a study uh, several things which you can consider for example selection of study sites inclusion exclusion of patients then selection of comparator perspective of the study collection of resource use and cost data health state and preference values so these are the aspects which you can uh, focus uh, uh, on to get economic evaluation more generalizable so now let's see when it comes to selection of study sites what are the recommendations it is always advisable to have a representative single site or more likely several sites because one site cannot be uh, really representative sometimes it can be uh, but not most of the times so to reflect the existing variation okay uh, in different hospitals or different clinics or different institutes may be advisable to have multi center study by enrolling several uh, sites because once you have several sites you are going to collect data at this center level or uh, site level uh, specific characteristics which can then help you to do multi level modeling like we do a uh, confounder adjustment in regression in normal uh, uh, data analysis likewise you can also do multi level modeling uh, to adjust for these covariates of uh, or confounders of different centers and this can then increase the uh, trial wide efficiency of uh, cost effectiveness uh, estimates that we will propose through this finding okay so there is a uh, table 1 here that provides like what such uh, uh, data you can incorporate uh, or collect okay uh, which you can use in uh, multi level modeling uh, so here is the table which says jurisdiction level and center level what data you should collect if you are considering the uh, jurisdiction level different jurisdiction you have enrolled or different centers you have enrolled but keep in mind that just uh, selecting different sites may not be sufficient you have to ensure that the patients enrolled at each uh, of these center or jurisdiction level or country when it is a multinational study they all each of them should sufficiently contribute the patient enrollment and therefore the data okay so for example even if you have say 10 sites but out of 10 if three sites are not enrolling enough patient population they don't have enough data to contribute and to pull to then it wouldn't uh, make even when we have 10 sites okay okay yeah even the center selection needs to be random uh, this is a very there are some of the things which we will talk uh, which they uh, propose as recommendations are really challenging when you are doing any uh, clinical trial planning okay uh, for example selection of center needs to be random this is all right but at the same time you have to ensure that the investigator who is going to conduct the trial is is capable 
and and therefore it might sometimes introduce uh, a bias kind of stuff because your primary goal is the capability of the investigator and you cannot just uh, uh, select randomly the centers okay the next important recommendation in the design stage at patient level is about inclusion exclusion of patients definitely for clinical trials the uh, inclusion exclusions of the patients are laid down quite uh, prior uh, at the designing stage um, but then if you are planning to include economic evaluations uh, as well uh, one must ensure that the patient population selected constitutes the normal case load okay normal case load for example it means that uh, uh, suppose you have uh, uh, let me take malaria example your idea is to enroll malaria patients now uh, likely these malaria patients might have disturbed liver function tests and even low hemoglobin so your normal population is this kind of population but then if your criteria uh, inclusion exclusion criteria states that you will exclude with a low hemoglobin and higher uh, liver function test again this is not the normal case load okay so okay. Uh, so it is a, a challenge in addition to that even if this is overcome okay this normal case load might vary from place to pay, place okay like some uh, uh, excellence uh, center of excellence might have more serious patients as opposed to uh, uh, different centers uh, the normal or general hospitals so uh, given these things uh, you have to consider that you enroll wide range of centers okay and uh, ensure that uh, at this level uh, each center contributes sufficiently well uh, number of patients uh, and data to further go for any uh, cost effectiveness uh, or uh, such uh, uh, analysis so uh, that is about uh, again uh, inclusion exclusion of patients and uh, whenever such study site or uh, center level uh, data is recommended it is highly important that all those data uh, uh, is collected and for using in multi level modeling okay then comes mm -hmm. the selection of comparator this is again a great challenge so as you know the name suggest or any clinical trial comparator is sort of must uh, specifically in randomized control trials we uh, we say it as controlled controlled means you have a comparator which is either placebo which is nowadays not acceptable and therefore you use a uh, standard therapy okay or uh, standard treatment now this standard treatment obviously called as current practice uh, will vary from center to center very highly likely okay for example a uh, low budget hospital may have their own protocol to assign uh, some low cost uh, antibiotics as their current practice uh, or as standard therapy however some other hospitals high budget hospital may have other uh, i mean they can afford uh, for higher antibiotics with uh, high cost so it is challenge uh, that how in prospective study uh, the major limitation as you see is the cost and time okay so if you uh, uh, i mean um, it is really uh, difficult uh, to accommodate uh, everything but then as if this is uh, possible then definitely one can have several such uh, comparators in the rct which uh, span the different uh, jurisdictions or regions uh, 
uh, from which the data is collected and for which you are targeting your economic evaluation. That is one way or alternatively you can even allow every center to use their own comparator and collect the data about that. So then at multi-level modeling you can adjust for whatever variations are existing. Okay, so this is how, uh, this is what is recommended for comparator use. Then perspective of study, yes again uh, this we have been talking and this becomes challenge when you when you have a multi-center or multi-site studies uh, as to which policy makers uh, uh, perspective you want to take into account because they might have different uh, 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 different policies and uh, costings for different things uh, but then the recommendation suggests that one should uh, adopt broad societal perspective so that it covers all costs and therefore kind of reasonably generalizable to uh, rest of the centers. The, okay. next, uh, the next one is uh, collection of resource use and cost data. This is very, very and highly important when you have already decided that you will collect uh, or you will have multi-site study to cover every, all the variation that might exist to which you are targeting your economic evaluation. Okay, but remember when this resource use and cost data is collected, it has to be collected separately for all the variables like hospital day, ICU days, then uh, uh, the uh, nurse visit, all these should be uh, collected separately and unit price of all these variables should be recorded individually. You cannot pool like for example, you cannot pool a total hospital charge as the cost but you have to have these data collected separately with unit price associated with each of these variables. And why so? Uh, the reason is that when uh, later if anyone is uh, using this data, uh, the person can model it according to the unit price in their region and then accordingly uh, can see how valid the findings are. For example, hospital days uh, will def uh, the cost for hospital uh, stay will vary from one hospital to another hospital, definitely one region to another region and therefore country to country. And that applies to even the nurse visit as well. So it is good to collect, collect them at individual level and unit price of each of these variables. Then comes the health state preference values. Now the most advantage of uh, this is that they are uh, ideally relevant to population under study. So need not really worry much about uh, the variations. Uh, sometimes you can get it uh, by doing prospective study parallelly or maybe from existing sources and literature because it is not, at least at this stage, it is not supposed to uh, vary, okay? So these are some of the recommendations which one can do when one is planning to do economic evaluations at patient level data. Now there are now further uh, recommendations at uh, analysis stage. So I am at uh, page 4, okay, on left hand side. Now at analysis stage, uh, the most important thing is to uh, check the homogeneity of the data. So anyway, this is checked uh, usually also uh, at when the multi-center uh, studies are done, but this is the first step, okay? And then there are different uh, analysis uh, uh, strategy, strategies are recommended here like fixed effect uh, regression approach which is proposed. 
and the authors recommend multi-level modeling to adjust for all the covariates which are collected at patient level, center level and therefore after adjusting all these things what findings you get are close to uh, generalization because you have taken uh, all the differences into account uh, in the uh, accounting. Although at patient level which are prospective uh, studies or RCTs uh, this multi-level modeling is warranted okay uh, but uh, maybe to some extent uh, uh, one can mm, do go ahead doing that with some pros and cons and apart from that yes sensitivity analysis still uh, have a great role in uh, uh, exploring the implications of variations that may exist so that that is all about the analysis stage and the lastly is uh, reporting uh, recommendations so the reporting recommendations they give uh, more details in table 2 okay um, and we know uh, by far uh, those recommendations but then the whole uh, gist of reporting is that you uh, report everything uh, done okay so objective of reporting is to make the user of your findings or reader of your paper aware of how much relevant the given analysis is for their setting region or country and this is possible only uh, through giving precisely all the details of your study like study population, the method of analysis, the assumptions and probabilities and source of probabilities and so on. Now and in fact uh, they also recommend to provide the characteristics of each center for each of the variables collected uh, in a tabular format as we do in systematic reviews and meta-analysis we give a table of characteristics of the studies included in systematic reviews and meta-analysis likewise uh, such tables are recommended the only uh, major uh, problem here is that due to the space limitations the journal may not be able to publish uh, such tables And therefore, uh, maybe it is recommended that they post such tables and more detailed economic evaluation report on their website. And that is how it can be uh, resolved to some extent because so that the reader or pro proposed uh, use user, they can evaluate the relevance or generalizability of uh, the findings of the economic evaluation so uh, that is what you can uh, do when you are doing this economic evaluation at patient level data okay now we come to some recommendations when you are using decision analytic uh, modeling okay because uh, we already talked about uh, some of the limitations of patient level data and uh, some more are like uh, uh, short term follow up of patients okay because prospective studies you cannot have a uh, longer follow up and because you have shorter follow up the outcome that you are measuring is a kind of immediate marker of long term outcome so it is not even the actual long term outcome that patient or clinician might be uh, interested in and additionally uh, it has unrepresented patients, clinicians, locations and so on. Unrepresented because there are several uh, uh, factors that needs to be considered for designing prospective uh, studies and implementing them. That uh, it is these things are more or less not represented. Okay. So the economic decision analytic uh, modeling uh, there are some recommendations people doing uh, these so at design stage 
here you will see that most of the recommendations are the recommendations for reporting and conducting economic evaluations so uh, they are like uh, it is very important at the design stage that you identify the decision problem and the options that you want to compare. Then the patient group, okay, the patient population which you are going to uh, study for economic evaluation in your decision uh, modeling. The outcome, the perspective and the analytical approach and structure and uh, so on. So uh, when it comes to perspective, again these also, uh, they also recommend that when you want to make it more generalizable considering uh, views or requirements of different uh, policy makers, then you can uh, opt for the broadest perspective uh, as, uh, your, as your study design. Uh, so that you can cover all uh, possible uh, things. So that is about design. Now when it comes to analysis of results, okay, uh, the most important is the jurisdiction should be stated, okay, uh, or the region or the country from which uh, uh, this data is drawn. Okay, so data like uh, whatever data you draw for the resources used, whether it is the cost of procedure or whether it is the uh, 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 hospitalization or even the effectiveness, preference values. So all these input data that you are uh, going to use uh, should be for the targeted jurisdiction okay um, and then uh, even when you are pulling sometimes multiple jurisdictions are uh, targeted and when you are pulling uh, heterogeneity should be reflected in the model okay to show the reader that so much of variation existed in the uh, different jurisdictions where we are targeting so please be aware of this. So they should be reflected. And specifically, if we are using data from outside of the target jurisdiction, and it can sometimes happen. For example, you don't have the uh, some of the input data for your modeling. Then you have to rely on other published papers which may have data from other jurisdictions. Okay, which is outside of the target jurisdiction, then you have to uh, justify the exchangeability of such data. Okay, whether it is, are you able to justify when you are using the data outside of this, uh, outside of the target one? Most of the times you can. Okay, you can say uh, that country or that region uh, resembles closely in several aspects, the healthcare structure is uh, similar and so on. So, uh, yes, you can do so. For example, specifically when you talk about relative treatment effectiveness, okay, it is by far exchangeable across locations, okay, um, for the given patient group. Uh, but then, yes, baseline uh, rates may not be, so prevalence rates, etc. may not be really exchangeable. So some things which are exchangeable, uh, you can definitely use outside of the jurisdiction, even when uh, they are not first to assess or justify how they, you can use those data and then uh, proceed uh, by empirically assessing the reliability of assumption which you are making that you can exchange such data. So once you have empirically done that, you can proceed with that. Um, even for preference value, uh, as I said, uh, there is a little uh, systematic variation between locations. So it is good enough to uh, go ahead and take uh, data outside of the juris target jurisdiction. 
but uh, very important uh, is the cost data okay which is always preferred uh, that you take from the target jurisdiction or the region or the location okay which you are targeting there there is lot of possibility of variation in cost data and uh, finally how uh, do you report uh, the search analysis is um, so the recommendation for reporting are like again um, reporting all aspects of the model uh, structure assumptions data input and um, uh, whatever uh, pooling of data or small meta analysis that you might do uh, should be uh, reported in great length again uh, the challenge still remains uh, that uh, how this comprehensive uh, report can be uh, conveyed to readers or published uh, so mm, yes i mean uh, this comprehensive report can be published uh, on the journal website which uh, uh, to which the uh, readers might refer to and uh, uh, yes so that is about the recommendations for reporting results which more or less remain uh, at least in terms of challenges it remains same uh, for both types of economic evaluations whether it is patient level or decision modeling now finally in the paper they give two tables table 3 and table 4 uh, which uh, talk about the recommendations for these two types of economic evaluation like trial base and decision modeling and these tables uh, can be used as a, a checklist whenever you are planning uh, such studies to ensure that you have considered all these recommendations at different stages of designing analysis and reporting of economic evaluations um, and yes uh, that's it any any questions you guys have no good people really good presentation good. yeah mm -hmm. yeah it was uh, yeah i think now uh, a uh, couple of weeks we will uh, focus on doing uh, guidelines so that it will be good yeah yeah okay uh, yes, next uh, probably next week I'm going to present a guideline to do a cost factors in analysis in, in surgery or oh, plastic surgery perfect your favorite uh, area <laughs> 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 yeah so uh, when uh, I don't know I think you know that uh, so in future if you want to get uh, if your face uh, plastic surgery done Rafael is the person <laughs> <laughs> okay <laughs> so uh, when even feel free to go over the existing uh, guidelines and if you would like to take up some I'll yes. give you a link uh, I don't know if you both are aware but I'll send you equator link okay but the yeah. equator uh, is such site uh, they keep uh, populating um, guidelines reporting guidelines for several designs okay. study designs a uh, good uh, uh, source page so yes. I'll send that and see if you would like to take any of them and sometime yes, 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 yes okay okay yeah okay, okay guys. so can I yeah. uh, what can I submit that 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 um, well, a consent okay yeah. I think I'll come sometime just let me know yes yeah, sure just... sure I'll SMS you whenever I'm coming uh, to yeah. office and then yeah. maybe I can drop into your office or whichever way yes. and get it collected okay 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 thanks okay. Finn uh, okay thank you yeah. thanks Timber thanks thanks Rafael, Rafael. Bye bye, Dipo. Bye bye. We have a good day for you guys. Yeah, good night to you. Bye. You have a meeting. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes. We'll okay. Meet. Yeah. Bye. Okay. Bye bye.